Co-pilots, co-pilots, co-pilots. There are co-pilots everywhere. You, as a user, as an expert, as a consumer, are confused. What the heck is co-pilot? So in this video, without going into too much technical details, I'll explain to you what is the co-pilot technology from Microsoft, the different types of co-pilot, what it's used for, and how you can benefit from co-pilot. Hi everyone, my name is Ihab, I'm principal architect, specialized with Microsoft modern work, digital workplace technologies. I've been working in tech for almost 20 years now and for the past few months I've been delving into co-pilot, experimenting, building demos, breaking things, enjoying the technology and learning a lot of new things. But with all the marketing, all the videos on YouTube about Copilot, it created a lot of buzz. Everyone's talking about it. Yet, there is still confusion between people about what the heck is Copilot. Is it for personal use? Is it for professional use? Is it for specific cases? Is it one license covers all? So let's break it down. Let's go back to bases and understand what each copilot does and how you can utilize it. So as an overall definition, copilot is your AI assistant. It utilizes AI concepts, AI models, depending on the type, either based on existing content or going through the web, generates images for you, etc., etc., etc. It's built on models that are owned by Microsoft. It utilizes OpenAI as well. Uh, it's quite comprehensive. It's great. It's effective. And one of the main advantages for the Workplace Copilot, which I'll talk about, it embeds with your work environment and with your Microsoft applications. This is what they call the M365 Copilot. This service, this feature embeds pretty much within your M365 environment. It targets your data that you work with on a daily basis. It helps you with writing your emails. One of the most fantastic features of Copilot M365 is the utilization within MS Teams. Long calls, workshops, you don't have to rewatch them, you don't have to fiddle with, with the transcripts. You can actually use Copilot directly during the call. So if you, if, if you, reach, if you enter the call that started um, a while back, like 20 minutes before, there is a transcript enabled, recording, etc. You could use Copilot, summarize for me what's been discussed. Fantastic, you don't have to even ask people. But what most people use it for, what I use it for, is to summarize meetings, actions, things mentioned, it saves you a lot of time. That's in MS Teams. You could use it with your email. It coaches you about writing professional emails. <laughs> I had a colleague the other day. Uh, he, he wanted to send an email. That's a slightly to discuss a challenging issue. Let's put it that way. And Copilot, he showed me the result. Copilot helped him to put it brilliantly, de delivering the message, the issue of disagreement in a way that is effortless, spotless. The, so your emails, your writing, um, in Word, for example, so imagine you work on different documents, and then you say, okay, I've been working on this brief, and I've been working on this proposal. Can you please combine this section and this section from these documents into this new Word document? It goes and does that for you. So it, it transforms the way the worker does things within the M365 ecosystem. So this is the very first type, M365 Copilot. It is used for the worker place. There is another Copilot as well that was launched at a similar time, which is the Premium Copilot, and this is more for your personal use. You could say it's similar to ChatGPT. However, that one is embedded directly within your Windows. It does things within your Windows, within your own files, within your own experiences that you have on your computer. It's an AI assistant. It will help you with managing tasks, calendars, generating content, similar things to what I've mentioned earlier, but on a smaller context here, within your own files, within your own uh, computer. 
the licensing is different. One is for organizations and one is for individuals. And there is the famous within the coders, developers, the GitHub co-pilot. It's part of the GitHub subscription models. Um, it provides developers, coders, with tools, snippets, ability to automate their coding process. It pretty much transformed the experience for developers and coders. It saves them a lot of time. You could, for example, start with the main structure of whatever application you do. You could reference certain libraries. You can reference code from GitHub, from other places to automate. One of the fantastic things that it does, similar to ChatGPT, by the way, this particular thing that I'm about to mention, is troubleshooting as well. So if there are things uh, that are that scream out, you know, something missed, logic not being placed right, it will tell you. So, so you tell it, okay, I've rendered this code, I'm getting errors online, this and that, can you help me with what the issue is? And it would update the code for you and give you alternatives again, this is not a human, so we have to remember this is a machine, this is a software, this is an application. So there are certain types of, of errors that are too complex that require human uh, reasoning. It's not going to get it quite right, but for most things, it does them right brilliantly. And remember, most of the code has been written. <laughs> like if you talk about checkout, login, uh, send a message, add a product to cart. Um, most of these functions that people tend to reuse and reuse, they've been written already. So it's, it's not common you get someone to write completely different user experience that requires a new code. But however, obviously, there is innovation everywhere. So this is the type for coders, GitHub Copilot. And you have a more specialized Copilot within the Power Platform in general. It's still in preview within certain places. So in Power Apps, for instance, you can start your application, your project, and start typing in plain English or whatever supporting language. I'm trying to, to target this. I'm trying to do a page that has this information, uh, use this kind of theme color, use these kind of controls, these kinds of drop downs, etc., etc. Copilot goes and creates it for you. It's a hit and miss, but it's there. It can get you started. If it's something not too complex, it does the job for you. And remember, these things are only getting better. So these are the early iterations of this uh, technology. The other Copilot type that you have, and again, you have Copilot, for example, specialized for dynamics, CRM, uh, sales uh, to manage the sales process and help sales people to manage the whole A to B um, sales journey with the customers and opportunities, deals, etc. And you have Copilot Studio, which is for me is is a very exciting uh, environment. It's been updated heavily since they launched it. Um, basically, you build an AI solution low code, you can extend it further and do more advanced things. You can uh, target a website, like you have your public website, okay, Copilot, um, target this website, do Q&A, and then you could do rules. So for example, if you have cheeky people trying to break it, you put controls around it, you could put rich media, publish, you could publish it publicly, depending on the security setups. You put the code on your website, voila, you have your AI chatbot that helps your customers, your users to uh, interact with it. You could do smart things like action-based. So if you wanted to do a bot and then people come buy a product uh, based on that, it can do recommendations based on choices and past questions. Again, that requires a training, requires design, but the coding aspect of it is minimal. Within the M365 context, you can target data sources like Azure Blob Files, SharePoint, you can publish it with some work as a SharePoint component, uh, you can publish it to MS Teams, you could do a lot of great things with it. And now Microsoft are pushing a new copilot, it's not out yet, they call it custom copilots within SharePoint. So imagine that you have your human resources uh, who have access 
they go within their site and they say we need a co-pilot about for new joiners. Those, so they select all the documentation for co for new joiners. Tick 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 tick. Build me a new joiner co-pilot. It starts there. You have something based on live data within their policies and procedures. But then they say, hmm, it's not doing what we need. We need to be more creative, add more things. So if they are trained or you have someone who's an expert, extend with Copilot Studio and then you can include videos, you can, you can add uh, live links, you can add decision making, a conditional journey. So if they say this, show this, if they mention that, do that. And uh, that would extend based on the simple custom Copilot from SharePoint. So it's been growing and growing, more products are coming. Um, more services are coming. It can be confusing because everything is called Copilot. But think about it as you have an assistant for a specific thing. You have an assistant, Copilot, for your own data. You have an assist assistant, Copilot, for your work related things. Copilot for your sales things. A Copilot builder for you to do custom things. A Copilot to help you with coding. So basically, an assistant for a specific thing. Some of them require licensing, some of them are in place, some of them are still in preview, some of them are still coming and you can check the Microsoft website to read the official documentation. I hope you found this video useful, helpful, simplify things for you. Thank you for watching, see you next time. Take care for now.